reaction time by the world's population. When wow. we look at things like the Mandela effect, the Mandela effect is a psyop. When we look at things like the discussion and debate of the flat earth, when we look at things like Jade Helm. Isn't this the launching, what you're talking about, the AI 7 million node modeling of humanity? I kind of connect that to the whole Jade Helm thing. And it is 7 billion. 7 billion. 7 million. Sorry, billion. Yeah. Jade Helm was one of the first public manifestations of an artificially intelligent simulated military operation. And the purpose of this was to test the psychological response by people around the world, not just in the United States, but how people would respond to a military operation like this. And this was no bullets, you know, right. not, no shots fired, right. but this was a full-on tabletop exercise taken out into the public arena and run real time by an artificially intelligent system. This is one example that I can give you of the sentient world simulation in real time, in physical form, playing out. Go to Purdue University 2006 sentient world simulation, it'll pop right up. So it's no big deal. But it's understanding the ramifications of this that's really important. So we're looking at the B system, right. SWS, we're looking at the computer system that will be able to control every person on the planet, including, as it says in Scripture, the ability to buy and sell real time using the adiabatic quantum computer with the now more than the equivalent processing power of 7 billion human brains. It's way beyond that. That was the model 2048. Yeah. Let me give people a tangible touch point. When the first adiabatic quantum computer came out, the 128, it could process in 10 seconds a problem that would take a transistor-based quantum computer 30,000 years to solve. Jeez. You can't even wrap your head around no, it. No, you can't even Crazy. contemplate those kinds of numbers. Not at all. And it's interdimensional. You know what hit me when you said the word node and humans and nodes? From the Christian perspective, we are spiritual vessels for the Holy Spirit to indwell. We are the temples that the Lord indwells as believers in Christ. To actually call a person a node is almost like calling them a vessel, whether they're empty vessels or spiritually dead vessels in the sense of how we were born into creation, spiritually dead. But there's still nodes or vessels that could be possessed or however they're going to go about this thing with the mark of the beast but they call people nodes of all things this goes back to the early stages the early development in the world of mk ultra and the ability to control people psychologically mentally and physically this all folds into the beast system everything all of this you said this before we went on the air the science fiction writers haven't got anything on the Bible. It's all in the Bible already. And you said it better than I did, so I'll have you repeat Oh, sure. That. We were talking about an upcoming project that Anthony's involved with, releasing with Douglas Woodward, John Shimura, and I believe with Josh Peck. They all did a project together. I've been privileged to be able to read ahead of time and just give some feedback on it. And I said, I came up with a snappy one-liner for your book. If you want to use it, I said, sci-fi can only dream of going where the Bible's already been. <laughs> I, I, I hear a little twinge of Star Trek in there. Yes, it's true. It, it has a Star trek -y kind of feel to it, but the Bible is already there. It's like when I'm explaining to my nephew, I said, you know where Star Wars happened? Star Wars happened between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. You didn't know it was written back then, did you? <laughs> that is beautiful. See, that's, that's what I mean. You have a whole different area of research than I do, and Chris, you know, the trinity that we have going on here is amazing. I just love when you bring stuff like that in. Is well, we're going to get Chris back? now. Yeah, she's back. Okay. Jump in. 4096 basically is the capstone, and we know that the capstone also represents the coming of the Antichrist because in the Bible, the cornerstone was changed to capstone, and that represents Lucifer, Apollo. We know that Apollo is underneath CERN, and they want to resurrect him. 
I do believe the Tower of Babel is the casket of Osiris. His head is in the casket. It is an alchemy machine with lapis lazuli and gold. It's harmonic. It's electric. And I do believe they are going to use that to raise the Antichrist. The Ganesh, which is translated to 4096, is the Ohm. 4096 is exactly Saturn, Venus, and Jupiter Trinity, which is the sun and the moon and the resurrected Saturn. Because when we're talking about Ganesh, which is the elephant, he is the son of Shiva, which is Shiva. Because it's the same thing with Nimrod. When he's killed, then he's the resurrected Nimrod as Tammuz. Because Semiramis is the moon, Nimrod is the sun, Tammuz is the sun and the moon both. It's a split deity of male and female, sun and moon. And this has to do with the cycles of the sun and of the moon. And when we're talking about the four that represents the solidness of the capstone, which is Kunum, which is Jupiter, Sobek, which is Saturn, he's the z pin Isis, which is Venus, the female aspect of Saturn, and Horus, the sun, that is the resurrected Saturn as Ra. And we know that Set and Horus, they were always battling each other in order to gain the throne. And so one represents the sun and one represents the moon. And so that's the trinity of what they want to resurrect is the trinity. That's why Shiva put the head of the elephant wow. on Ganesh when he cast her and he put it back on. The intelligence system, the operating system, the intelligence link up. That's why it was interesting to me was the Ganesh aspect of 4096 was the capstone on top of the pyramid, which was the Eye of Lucifer, which is the intelligence running the whole thing. And I was going, do you think, this is a hypothetical, of course, um, since we were covering the head transplant story, and we've reported that in a previous video, but do you think that the, the opening of the pit with the encryption key is the putting the capstone on event uh, as far as they're signaling with Ganesh, kind of like a hardwiring the capstone intelligence system in place through the opening of the abyss? Or is, yeah. is there anything to communicate that the abyss opening is the hardwiring of the elephant intelligence capstone system? It's the brain. It's the consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's why there was two trees in the garden. There was a tree of life and a tree of consciousness. And those that are not listening to God, that are in the consciousness of Satan through hell and all of his demons and his deity, those are the ones that are going to be encrypted into the computer, into 4096. Now, those that are awake in Christ, they will not be encoded. They will not be lost forever into the abyss of Saturn and this cryptic key. Anthony, as the node connection to this, uh, I want to connect it to the nano dust. Now, we've been ingesting nano dust and all the particulates in the atmosphere for a long time now. Mm -hmm. Are we going to operate, I'm, I'm just saying hypothetically again, are we going to operate like some kind of crystalline receiver for this elephant head capstone system when it goes online that we all become nodes or receivers of some sort? Yeah, I think you're right on the mark with that because that's, that's a purposeful pun, the mark. Okay. Um, this, is the mark you know, this is the mark of the beast system. Now, we have free will. Let's start with that. We have the choice to either accept the mark or reject it. If we accept it, it means that the nanoparticles that are within all of our bodies right now that are in a dormant state, we have said We've given permission for the activation of those nanoparticles. 